Okay, so now that we have all of the hardware and the software configured correctly, we can open up the One Button Studio application itself. And you can see down at the dock here, I just have all of the necessary software for the One Button Studio. I removed everything else on the dock. So you're welcome to do that as well. The applications will be found in the Applications folder of your computer, so you can drag them down to the dock and just add the ones that are necessary for your studio if you want to. But for now, I'm going to open up the One Button Studio application, so I'm going to click on that. And the very first thing that it presents you with is this window here. So before you get going, this is very important. You want to look here where it says, please select the slash volumes directory, and then click go. So basically, you want to direct the One Button Studio to this slash volumes directory, and that just lets it know where to point whenever you insert the flash drive to power everything on. So this is very important. So it should be selected just by default, but if the volumes directory is not selected, to find it the easiest, just like it says at the top of the screen here, you can hold Command, Shift, and then the G key on your keyboard, and that's going to give you this search bar. So in here, you would just want to type slash volumes, so forward slash with a capital V, and volumes is plural, so slash volumes. And once you type that in, you can click on go in the bottom right corner here, and that's going to direct it to that volumes directory. You'll see the volumes folder appear up here, so you know it's selected. And once you have that going, then you can click on open. And this is the only time that you have to do this. Once you select the volumes directory once, you will not have to do this again every time you open the application or if the computer restarts. That was something that you had to do in the old version, but in this one, it just is once, and then it's just going to hold that setting. So once you have the volumes directory, go ahead and click open. And that's going to, again, just direct it into the right place. So the last thing we need to do is just change a setting in the preferences of the One Button Studio itself in order to get the lights to work properly. So you want to go up to the One Button Studio text in the top left corner of your screen. Click on that. And then select Preferences from this list. And that is going to give you a preference pane that we'll cover more in depth in the next video. And the one thing you want to look for is this option in the middle that says use authentication for lighting control. And you're going to check this box. And checking this box is going to enable the username and the password. And this is the username and the password that you used when you set up Indigo that first time back in the previous video. So you're going to put in the username and the password that you used for setting up Indigo. So in my case, it was OBS and then my password here. And that is going to give you that authentication for the lighting control through Indigo. So you want to put that in there and you just want to leave it as it is and leave this checked and that way the lights will fire. So you just want to leave this checked. You want to leave the username and password exactly as you had it in the Indigo software and that way the lights will run. So then when you're done with this, you can close out of the preferences. So now all that you need to do is test the One Button Studio. And to do that, you can take your USB flash drive and just plug that directly into the USB hub that you have. And that is going to power everything on. So you can see here, the lights have come on, the camera comes on on screen here, and now I have that video feed going, I have the lights on in my room, so everything turns on okay. If it doesn't, it's most likely going to give you some kind of error that the H.264 box isn't connected, so you just want to make sure that that's plugged in. If you're getting a white screen here or a blue screen, there's some troubleshooting steps that are later on in the setup guide, so you want to just check on those. Sometimes even just unplugging and then plugging back in the flash drive will fix that. So going on from here, we have our video feed, the lights come on automatically, and to start a recording, all you have to do is press the button. So the button is the silver PowerMate button that you have, or you can use the spacebar of a keyboard if you connect a keyboard up into the USB hub. And so I'm just going to press my button down once, and it's going to give me this five second countdown. And once that five second countdown is done, I would go in front of the camera, I would record my video, and you can see it's recording. It has the time ticking up in the corner down there, and you can see the video feed is just live. I would record my video, I can record as long as I want, and then to stop the recording, I would just come back to the button, come back to the spacebar, click the button again, and that's going to stop the recording, and you can see here it's going to say, please wait while we save your video, and it's going to give you a progress bar, which is also that's something new. So you want to wait till that progress bar is all filled in and done. It might take a couple minutes for the video to save over fully, but when it is all saved, it's going to tell you the session is complete. 
And then just like it says on the screen here, if you wanted to, you could press the button again to start a brand new recording, go back in front of the camera, record another video, and that's going to save a second video onto your drive, and you can record as many videos as you want. But if you're all done, you can take the flash drive back out of the dock here, and that's going to shut the studio back off, so the lights will turn off, the video feed will go away, and it will go back to this home screen. And so that's how you know that everything is working properly. So once we're back to the home screen, I now have my files on my flash drive, so then I can take those and watch them back or edit them if I need to, but I have those saved over to the drive as many times as I recorded in the studio. So once that is all working, then your One Button Studio is good to go. You can move on to the next video where we'll cover some of the preferences and the settings that are in the One Button Studio app.